Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are trying to get into software development, iOS development, software QA, and other stuff, check out the link in the description tab below. They are offering courses. Um, you can actually live on campus over there. They are hooked up with employers around the country, um, around the world really, and they're going to help you try to find your first job in this industry. So uh, make sure you give them a look, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, and the link is in the description tab below. All right, so the reason why you want to learn WebAssembly is WebAssembly is going to be the way of the future for web browsers that need to have um, any sort of intense calculation, game engines, things like that. So for instance, um, right now, most people are using WebAssembly and they're writing code in C++ or Rust. So in this example here, this is using Rust. It was written in Rust and then it's compiled to WebAssembly. And WebAssembly uses this bytecode called WASM and it's, it's just W-A-S-M, um, but it's WebAssembly bytecode, and that's what's actually causing all this to, to work. So uh, it's really cool. It's actually used in conjunction with something else though. Uh, and what that is, is that back in the old days, we didn't have the ability for the browser to communicate with graphics cards. Uh, but about 10 years ago, WebGL became the open specification for having browsers use JavaScript to be able to communicate with the graphics card. So um, when we were able to get that, we were able to get like these 3D graphics, we were able to get like a lot of uh, animation capabilities and things like that. But the problem is, problem is, is that JavaScript itself is pretty maxed out as far as what we can do with it inside of a browser. It's a dynamically interpreted duct type language. Um, it's never gonna be as fast as something like C or C++, which is what is required for a lot of games and things like that. Um, so we're not going to be able to have virtual reality or anything inside the browser, um, even with the support of WebGL, um, without a faster language. And that's why WebAssembly was created. WebAssembly has the backing of all the major browsers and all the companies that support those browsers. Um, it has all the major backings from like companies like Adobe um, and just you know random you know technology companies and things like that. They're all coming together um, and working on this new specification and how it's all going to work. Right now, it's still very archaic. It's still very in its early infant like form. I would say probably in its alpha stage more than uh, a beta stage at this point. But the reason why you want to learn it, though, is to get in on the ground level as this thing starts to come up because this is going to be something that's going to be used quite a bit, and it's going to really change web development um, quite a bit. All right, so there's four things that are needed for WebAssembly to be able to run. The first thing is you need to be able to write your source code, and your source code is going to be written in C++ or Rust at this point. Um, eventually, there's going to be other languages. Uh, there's Blazor.net, which allows you to write C Sharp, and um, Python has some stuff too. So uh, for right now, though, most of the popular stuff for WebAssembly is C++ or Rust. So you're going to write your source code in that stuff, and then you're going to compile it, and when you compile it, you're going to be given a binary WASM file. And the WASM is a dot, um, .wasm extension. And again, it just stands for this uh, the WebAssembly bytecode, basically. But um, the WASM file is then something that you need to include into your web project. So your web project could be anything from Django to Express or whatever, but it's going to be some sort of server-side app because obviously this is a web-based uh, technology. So when customers go to your server you're going to have to give them the WASM file, obviously. And then once they have that, there's going to have to be JavaScript code that you're going to write that is then going to instantiate that WASM file or that WASM source code. And by instantiating it, um, these steps are just uh, the, the four steps that are required. Uh, unfortunately, that might change in the future. But for right now, as far as how to include the WASM file into our project, as well as instantiate it, that's something that um, we're going to look at throughout this video. So the easiest way to get started writing WebAssembly code right now is going to be going to this website right here. Uh, and it's called WebAssembly Explorer. And it just makes it so much easier. You can actually, in the browser, write C++ code, then click Compile. It's going to give you this WAT file that I'll explain in just a moment. But it'll also give you the actual binary WASM file that you need to include in your JavaScript project. So it's really cool. We can go ahead and create a C++ function. And I don't expect you to know C++ or anything. Uh, but this is just a simple function that's going to add two numbers. So we have integer one that's going to be passed in. And 
uh, this integer two. So we'll call it number two. All right, and uh, inside here, we're just gonna simply say return number one plus number two. And you do have to terminate it with a semicolon. Go ahead and press compile. And then this gives you this WAT format that I was gonna tell you. Um, because the actual WASM bytecode, it looks like this. And clearly that's not something that a human can look at and understand and read or whatever. So in order to be able to solve that problem, there is this intermediate kind of um, compilation file that is created for you, this WAT file. And this is the human readable version of WebAssembly. So I say human readable. So this actually isn't as pretty as something like, um, you know, Python, obviously, but this is at least a lot easier to read than something on the right over here. So if we look at the code here, you can see that it's a module that got created for us. And then the, the thing that you, you want to note is that these uh, these little abbreviations on the front and back, this is going to be what is actually exported and um, and something that is going to be callable via your JavaScript. So in order for JavaScript to call the function, you can see that the add function got changed to this name. So that's actually what we're going to have to reference inside of our JavaScript file. And it's not some sort of random thing, um, but uh, it is just like a naming terminology. So basically just expect those characters on the front and end of your function names. Now this uh, now this goes this gives me the ability to go ahead and download it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And you can see I get this test.wasm file. So you also need another way of writing your code um, besides writing it into a browser. I recommend Visual Studio Code as just an editor because it's free and cross-platform. So I'm gonna open up to this WebAssembly folder. All right, and we'll just create an HTML file here. All right, so we have a simple HTML file here. Now what we need to do is go ahead and take the WASM file that we downloaded and put it into the folder of our project. All right, and um, here you can see I pasted it in here and that my um, Visual Studio Code recognizes that this is a WASM file. It doesn't know how to display it, but um, you can go ahead and open it anyway if you want, but you're just gonna get this weird bytecode. All right, so in order for us to be able to use this WASM file, we need to go ahead and create a JavaScript file. So we're just going to call this our um, wa.js file for WebAssembly. Uh, and then here we're going to go ahead and define our actual WebAssembly code. So let's go ahead and define our add function that, that we went ahead and we're going to go ahead and uh, import from the, the WebAssembly code that we created from C++. And we're going to create a function. And this function is going to be what is uh, called to load the actual module as uh, because you have this is the instantiation process. Basically, um, it's a bunch of asynchronous AJAX calls to the API, the WebAssembly API within the browser, um, and some things need to be done in order to set up byte streams to read the byte data and then execute it and all that stuff. And then once you do that, though, then you can actually access it via JavaScript. So we're defining that function right now. We're going to call it load wasm because that's actually what it's doing. And then we're just going to say it takes in a file name as the function. And then what we're going to do is say return and use the fetch API. And the fetch API is going to take in the file name that you pass into it. And then we're going to do a dot then. The dot then is going to take the response of that call. And then we're going to return the response dot array buffer. And this is the confusing part. This is all just the like the standard plumbing that you just have to call in order to instantiate WASM files. And I also have a typo here. All right, so what to keep in mind here is this first API call is going to say, give me the file name, then it's going to return the file, or it's going to grab the file name, which is the, the WASM file. It's then going to turn uh, that WASM bytecode into an array buffer. And then we have to do another call, which we're going to say, um, take that the the bits from the array buffer and then we're going to say use WebAssembly to compile it so we can call WebAssembly and then we say dot compile and then we pass in the bits all right and then after that is done we need to do the final step and then we have a typo here this needs to be in response to that. that's why you love the editor because it tells you you got problems there uh, all right all right, so in this last call, we're going to take the module that got compiled for us, and we're going to then say return new WebAssembly dot instance 
and this has to be capitalized and then we pass in the module that got instantiated uh, and this is the final process all right so now let's go ahead and close off this function we're going to go ahead and call that function now which is load wasm and then here we're going to pass in the argument for our test.wasm file that got compiled for us on that website and then we're going to do a dot then on this thing all right, and then it's going to say, take the instance that got compiled for us, and then we're going to say, let's assign the add function and say that equals the instance dot exports. And this is where you can actually access the function name. And if you remember correctly from the website, the function name got turned into this crazy thing. So we wanna go ahead and copy that. Uh, and then we could paste it in here. So again you could just remember this naming convention but i mean at first when you're first getting started it's going to be difficult to remember all that stuff all right so now that we've done that we can now access add when we go ahead and look at this uh this web page but of course we need to go to our index.html and at the bottom of the the file here i don't know what the heck that is uh, at the bottom of the file i'm going to go ahead and add the script tag add the source equals my um wa.js file and close off the script all right, and we're just going to view this from within the browser. And just so that we can actually see something, we're just going to put a title on this. So Web Assembly Tutorial by Chris Hawks. All right, so what I want to show you here is that if you go to look at this web file um, locally, the HTML file, you're going to get this course header that this that doesn't allow the Ajax call to go through. You can learn more about course headers if you want. But the bottom line is you have to have a server that's actually going to be running that HTML in order for this to work. All right, so since we're using JavaScript, the best and fastest way to set up your own server is to download Node.js. So it's cross-platform. Again, it's free. Just download it and install it. And then once you have it installed, what we're going to use is NPM. Um, and NPM is actually something it's, uh, if I right click here, I'm going to say open in terminal. But npm is a package manager installer. So we can say npm install, and this is uh, hyphen G is for global because we want to be able to access the uh, the web server anywhere we need it. But we're going to say install this node project called HTTP server. And this uh, just allows us to spin something up very, very quickly. Um, and like, so for instance, in the directory of our project, if I just simply type HTTP server now, um, this thing's going to say, okay, I'm listening on 8080. All right, and then for a shortcut, if you control click from Visual Studio Code, it's going to go ahead and open it up into the browser. So this looks just like it did before, but now when we look at the console, we don't have those uh, those error messages. So that's pretty cool. We're not getting that the fact that we can't access our add function. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we add uh, two and two. We get four. Um, and, and the crazy thing about this function here is that it doesn't seem all that impressive because clearly you have that built-in capability from within JavaScript. But the cool thing is, is that we built that code from C sharp and then we brought it into a actual web browser and used JavaScript to execute it. Um, so the thing about that code that's being executed as well is that it's actually much more efficient than raw JavaScript. This is going to be uh, a faster, more, um, it's just, it's, it's a much more lower level type of language than JavaScript. Uh, so any sort of thing that you can write in WebAssembly that JavaScript can, can communicate with, you're going to have massive savings when it comes to the ability for, uh, you know, a lot of compilation and processing and things like that. So if you had some sort of add function, right, for a WebGL project that's using 3.js, you would probably want to write, you know, that hardcore compilation, not necessarily an add, but like some sort of complicated algorithm. You're going to write that in WebAssembly, and you're going to do that processing using WebAssembly, um, obviously, and not, not something like JavaScript because you're going to get nearly native performance of like C++, like I said, or at least half the performance, which is light, light years ahead of what we have right now. So anyway, guys, I hope you like this tutorial. Make sure you subscribe for more information like this. I have all kinds of tutorials available out there. If you're looking to get started in web development, I recommend my new course from Udemy um, because it covers everything in 2019 for the most part of what you know companies are using for web development. WebAssembly is new and on the horizon, so um, this is something you can also add to uh, your arsenal as well. But thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye.